Hi, I'm Corey Rogers, Vice President of Marketing for National Equipment Dealers. Today we'll be walking around one of Bell's large E-Series trucks equipped with the latest Tier 4 Final Stage 5 compliant engines and after treatment technology. We're standing here in sunny Florida in the middle of a shell and sand mining operation. Behind me I have the Bell B45E articulated dump truck. In this video, we'll review common features and benefits of Bell's larger six-wheel drive articulated dump truck models. The Bell B40E, the B45E, and the B50E. We'll talk about features and benefits, operator conveniences, safety features, and we'll provide recommendations and instructions for operators for pre-check inspections, operating procedures, how to start and shut down a bell truck, and we will review thoroughly the buttons, functions, features, monitors, screens, and important features within the cab for the operator. Bell's three largest six-wheel drive articulated dump trucks, the Bell B40E, B45E and the larger B50E all have an industry leading power to weight ratio. This contributes to better ground bearing pressure, excellent fuel economy, and very good performance in difficult terrain. All Bell trucks are built with high quality components. Bell trucks are powered by Mercedes turbo diesel engines that are stage five tier four final compliant. The Bell B40E and B45E utilize the Mercedes OM471LA engine. The Bell B40E has 510 horsepower and the B45E has 523 horsepower. The larger B50E is powered by the OM473LA engine and it has 577 horsepower. All these Mercedes engines are equipped with standard Jacobs engine brakes, which helps to preserve your hydraulic wet disc brakes for longer and helps significantly with the braking performance of the truck. The new Stage 5 Tier 4 Final After Treatment System on the Bell Articulated Dump Trucks is designed to reduce hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, particulate matter, and nitrogen oxide to near zero emissions levels. In order to achieve this environmentally friendly emission standard, the system uses a combination of exhaust gas recirculation at the engine and a single module system which incorporates three components, an SCR, a DOC, and a DPF or diesel particulate filter. The new Stage 5 engines have three separate types of regeneration. The first level is automatic passive regeneration. The second level is automatic active regeneration and the third level is a manual regeneration process. For tier four final trucks that do not comply with stage five, this is not required. The first stage of regeneration, also known as automatic passive regeneration, the operator will be driving the truck as normal. There'll be no warning lights, no alarms, and no reason to stop the truck for a manual regeneration. The majority of the time, the operator will have this condition as long as he is working the truck hard and not idling the truck excessively. 
In the second stage of regeneration, also known as automatic active regeneration, if high exhaust temperatures are not being achieved, the operator can continue to drive, but will be warned through the monitor that it could be necessary to stop the machine and perform a manual regen in the near future. However, he can continue driving and operating the truck until a safe time to stop the truck and perform that manual regeneration. In extreme cases, it may be necessary to perform a manual regeneration process. When this is the case, the operator will be required to park the machine and run the manual regeneration process, which usually takes between 40 to 45 minutes. The Mercedes engine is perfectly matched with the Allison 7-speed automatic transmission. The Allison transmission features 7 speeds forward and 1 speed reverse. It also comes with an automatic lockup clutch, which helps to improve fuel economy when traveling at high speeds. The large Bell trucks are designed with heavy-duty front and rear frames. They're supported by three Bell manufactured axle housings and wheel ends with Dana axle shafts, Eaton differentials, and they also have an inner axle differential lock made by Kessler. In addition to that, they have controlled traction differentials, all of which provides great traction control when navigating difficult terrain. The large Bell trucks are equipped with ATC, automatic traction control. This system automatically engages the IDL, inner axle differential lock, and the CTD, controlled traction differentials, anytime wheel spin is detected, and then deactivates it once traction is restored. On the large articulated Bell trucks, they are equipped with outboard mounted wet disc brakes. On the models B40E and B45E, the wet disc brakes are only on the front and middle axle. On the larger B50E, all three axles have wet disc brakes. In addition to the wet disc brakes, the system is designed with a seven stage brake retarder. This can be programmed easily through the SSM inside the cab from anywhere from 25% retardation to 100% retardation. This helps to improve brake life and braking performance for the operator. The large Bell trucks have a unique suspension system designed to maintain constant wheel contact with the ground at all times. The Bell B40E and the Bell B45E have dual hydro-pneumatic struts attached to the front axle. On the Bell B50E, we have an adaptive suspension that's fully hydraulic and electronically controlled for maximum operator comfort and ride. The Bell trucks have a unique and proprietary rear suspension system that's comprised of a three-point mounted walking beam system. This system ensures constant wheel contact at all times and allows each of the wheels to move independently from one another. The Bell trucks feature a fully oscillating and articulating center joint between the front and the rear frames. This contributes to better off-road capability, better maneuverability, and a tighter turning radius than rigid frame trucks. Bell trucks are known for great safety features. Two of the most notable safety features include the hill hold, hill assist feature, and the tip safe feature. With the hill hold, hill assist feature, as the operator climbs the hill or goes down a hill, the truck will automatically apply the parking brake when the accelerator is released. The truck will come to a stop with the retarders and the parking brake will be applied. This holds the truck on the hill and prevents potential rollback. Another nice feature is the hill assist. The hill assist feature works when the operator is ready to go back up the hill or down the hill and the truck's own weight prevents the parking brake from being released until enough engine RPM is applied to overcome the torque to move the truck. This is called the hill assist feature. The tip safe feature functions to protect the operator from accidental rollover. When backing in to dump the load, if the rear chassis is rolling more than 15%, which is the standard default setting, then the operator will not be allowed to raise the bin. This setting can be set and programmed from five to 25% but the standard factory recommendation is 15. Bell trucks feature a highly accurate onboard weighing system. This system utilizes three separate strain gauges to measure the load to within 5% accuracy. The system tracks daily production and it can be viewed within the monitor in the counter screen. The information is also uploaded daily to Fleetmatic, Bell's exclusive telematics system. Bell's exclusive telematic system, Fleetmatic, 
comes with each Bell truck for a period of five years. The user-friendly interface can be seen anywhere in the world with an internet connection. Great information is available through this system, like geolocation information, machine working information, maintenance information, diagnostic information, and others. The system has the ability to set up automated email reports that can be emailed every day to select users. All Bell trucks have FOPS and ROPS certified operators cabs. As you enter the cab, one of the first things that you'll notice is that it has a completely flat floor design. This makes it easy to clean out the floor and it also keeps trip hazards to a minimum. As you sit in the Bell truck, you'll notice many convenience features for the operator. Starting at the steering wheel, you have the ability to tilt the steering wheel to a comfortable position. You can also telescope the steering wheel very easily. At the left of the steering wheel, you'll find a multifunction switch. This switch is used for your left side turn signal and your right side turn signal. It's also used to activate your headlights, your bright lights, and your horn. To the left of that is your radio, and a further left you'll have a couple of cup holders and a 12 volt power supply. Just above on the dash is a large open compartment for storage. You have two small compartments here on either side of the steering wheel for storage. You have another cup holder on the right hand side of the cab. And here is your SSM or sealed switch module keypad. This keypad is used to control most of the major functions of the truck. Starting the truck, stopping the truck, your bend tip functions, your drive functions, your AC and many other things. We'll talk more in depth about this keypad later. To the right of that is what we call the Bell B Drive. The B Drive is what you would use to select through different menus, features and functions on the monitor. Just above that is your emergency stop switch. If you get into an emergency, you can hit this and it will bring the truck to an immediate and abrupt stop. To release that, you will pull back up on it. To the right of the emergency stop switch, you'll find the mirror adjustment switch. This is a unique feature to the Bell trucks and it's very convenient for the operator. You simply select the left or the right side mirror and you can adjust the mirror to a position that's convenient. Really nice feature. Right below the SSM keypad is the hood raise and lower switch and by pressing the up arrow you can raise the engine hood. By pressing the down arrow you can lower the engine hood. Bell trucks are equipped with suspended brake and accelerator pedals. This helps to keep the floor clean, reduces the opportunity for debris to collect behind the pedals, and it's a similar design to an automobile. It's also possible to jump start the truck if need be from right underneath the left hand side of the front dash. There's a terminal for jump starting the truck. You can also do that on the outside but utilizing a special bell cable, you have the ability to plug that on that terminal and jumpstart the truck. All the bell cabs are designed with a large, full color interactive display with quick menus to get to important information. You can easily access machine configuration menus, machine information data, the counters information for your productivity, your rear view camera, and also diagnostics information. The bell cabs are designed with a very comfortable operator seat. It's an air suspension seat that's heated. You have the ability to make a lot of different adjustments and it'll fit just about any operator. One of the things that you can do is adjust the air suspension. So you can increase the air and you can decrease the air. You can also adjust the entire seat console forward and backwards. You have the ability to adjust the angle of the seat. You can adjust the length of the seat you have lumbar adjustments available to you and you can also set the shock absorber on or you can release it. There's also an adjustment for the horizontal suspension which allows your seat to slide forward a little bit and backward a little bit when you're driving. On the left side of the operator seat is a jump seat or a trainer seat. This is a great feature when you're training new operators on the job site. It's very easy to fold up or down. Bell trucks are designed to be easy to service and maintain. 
there's a maintenance chart located at the step prior to entering the cab that you can refer to. It's important to check all your fluid levels and check for fault codes prior to operating the truck. Before operating the truck, it's important to do a visual inspection all around the truck. Walk around the truck, look at all your hoses, look at the articulation joint, look underneath at your drive line and your axles and differentials and wheel hubs, and make sure there are no active leaks. If you do find a leak, contact your service department. Proper tire inflation is critical to the performance of any Bell truck. It's recommended that prior to operating the truck, you walk around and check for underinflation or overinflation and adjust as necessary. For your reference, there is a tire inflation chart located at the steps on the outside of the operator's cab. All Bell trucks are equipped with an auto lube system from the factory. It's important during your daily pre-check inspection to check the level of grease in the reservoir. If it needs to be filled using a regular grease gun, there's a nipple at the bottom of the reservoir where you can fill it. As you continue to walk around the truck doing your pre-check inspection, check the headlights, taillights, hazard lights, and especially your rear view camera. Make sure all of these are clean to get maximum visibility and maximum safety while you're operating the truck. Once you've finished your daily pre-check inspection and you're ready to enter the cab and go to work, as you're climbing the ladder, make sure to have three points of contact at all times. Once you're up on the deck, check the master switch to make sure that it's on. If it's not on, turn it on now. Now you can enter the cab. As you finish your daily pre-check inspection, and now you're inside the cab, checking your fluid levels is a cinch with the Bell trucks. There's an auto diagnostic screen that you can initiate through the system. To do so, you press the green button once. The system will ask you for a four digit code. That four digit code is the last four digits of the VIN number, which can be found on the serial number plate on the back left hand post of the cab. In this case, that number is 7436. Using the SSM keypad, there's a series of buttons that have numbers on them. We'll type in 7436. Now the system has initiated. In order to access the diagnostics menu, we'll go to the B drive, we'll select the E button, then we'll select the diagnostics menu and you'll see a screen that will show a series of different green checks. The green checks are positive, meaning that our levels are good. If you do have to fill any of your fluids, it's important to do so before you start your shift. It's especially important to look for the DEF fluid level. If the DEF fluid level falls before below 14%, a warning symbol and light will come on the screen and you definitely want to fill up your DEF fluid prior to going to work. These trucks are stage five, tier four final compliant engines, and they require DEF fluid in order to achieve those emission standards. It's also a good idea to do a visual inspection of the engine. At this time, you can raise the hood using the hood raise switch. Simply hold in the hood raise switch to raise the hood. Then you can walk outside of the cab and do a visual inspection of the engine at that time. You can also check the engine oil manually with the engine oil dipstick, or you can check your engine oil at the diagnostic screen. To shut the hood, you just hold in until it shuts. Once you've finished your daily pre-check inspection and you're ready to go to work, starting a Bell truck is as easy as pushing a button. There are no keys required to start a Bell truck. Simply press the green button to initiate the system. The truck will ask you for your four digit code. In this case, we'll put in 7436. 
six. Now we press the green button to start the truck. Now in order to put it into drive, first we must release the park brake. And the Bell truck's automatic park brake is engaged. We are in neutral. In order to drive, we will press the drive button and start to accelerate. Looking at the SSM keypad, all the functions of the truck for the most part are handled through this keypad. We have our start switch here. This is our engine shutdown switch. This is our hazard light switch. Next to that is the parking brake switch. We'll usually only have to turn this off one time. The system is equipped with an auto park brake. So anytime it's in neutral and even in drive and reverse, the auto park brake will be applied. In drive and reverse, it'll stay applied until we apply enough RPM to overcome the torque needed to move the truck. In this area, we have the controls for the air conditioner. This is to turn the air conditioner on. This is the air recirculate button. This is your fan speed button. There's three separate fan speeds that can be selected. This is your temperature button. Press the down arrow to lower the temperature and the up arrow to raise the temperature. Next, you have a button to control the vent direction and the air direction. Here we have the gear hold button. This is a convenient feature if you don't want the automatic transmission to shift up or down. You can press this button and it will maintain the gear. Then you have the IDL and CTD manual engage buttons. This system has an automatic traction control system, so if it needs, feels wheel slip and it needs to engage the inner axle differential lock or the control traction differentials, it does so automatically. When you press the lights, the first light will engage the IDL, inner axle differential lock, the second light will engage the control traction differentials manually. Then you have your beacon light switch, your driver's lights, that's your headlights and your tail lights, your windshield wiper speed selection, slow, intermittent, and fast. If you hold this button in, it will spray the washer fluid. You have your heated mirrors, your work lights, and here you have your I-tip button. The I-tip button has a couple of different positions. The first button is your hard stop. If that button is not applied, then you'll be in soft stop, which means your bin will raise to about 94%. If you're dealing with sticky material though, you'll probably want to put it in the hard stop function. And that allows the bend to raise to 100%. If we press it again, now we're in I-tip mode. One more time, we're in I-tip with hard stops. I-tip is an automatic dump mode. Basically, when we have it in I-tip mode, instead of having to hold and continue to hold the up arrow or the down arrow to raise or lower the bend, now we can just select the button and the system will automatically place the truck in neutral, apply the park brake, and raise the engine RPM sufficiently to raise the bed in a fast way and dump the load. Then all we have to do to lower the load is to press the button just one time. We can press drive and we can start to drive away. Very convenient feature and this will save the operator and improve the productivity quite a bit. It will save a lot of time. Then we have the brake retarder switch. This is to decrease and to increase the amount of hydraulic brake retarders that are applied. We have hydraulic wet disc brakes and we have hydraulic brake retarders. There are six different levels of retardation, starting at 25% and going all the way up to 100%. Another nice feature of this, and sometimes something that can confuse an operator, if you hold and maintain this button held in for about three seconds, the screen will display a speed selection switch. This is a nice safety feature and allows the operator to set a speed that they cannot exceed. So by holding it in, now it starts to flash. That means you're in the speed selection menu. You can increase the speed or decrease the speed. Then to set it, you'll simply hold it back in again, the lights stop flashing, and now that speed setting has been set. The B-Drive is a convenient selector switch that the operator can use to select different functions and menus on the monitor. The A button is used to go back. The B button can be used to access the service or diagnostics menu. The C button will move forward. The D button is a page back button. 
and the E button allows you to go to the main menu or the drive screen. The rotary knob is used to select within menus and you can press down to select different options. Once you've finished your shift, park the truck on a level surface and engage the parking brake. To turn off the truck, you'll simply press the stop button and the truck will automatically go into a turbo spin down mode to cool off all the after treatment system. As it does this, it will also evacuate the def from the lines back to the tank. This is a process that takes a few minutes. Simply press the button to stop. It goes into turbo spin down mode and then the system will start to evacuate the def lines. And as you exit the cab, before you turn off the master switch, you want to make sure that the light goes out above the master switch. This is your indication that it's okay to turn it off. We hope you've enjoyed this video. The video was originally designed to provide a basic understanding of the large E-Series Bell trucks. It was also designed to provide a basic understanding of how to operate a Bell truck. It was not designed to take the place of reading the operator's manual. Please take the time to review and read the operator's manual and consult that for any additional questions that you may have. If you'd like additional information on Bell Trucks, you can visit the website at belltrucksamerica.com. If you'd like more information about our company, National Equipment Dealers, you can visit our website at nedealers.com. Thank you.